when I talked about giving people a path to redemption that I was selfishly like talking about myself. Or maybe I just thought, God, I hope people don't think that. Because I wasn't. Um, no, I wasn't, I wasn't talking about myself. I'm a comedian. I'm, I'm um, a comedian. And when you're a comedian, just by virtue that comedy is not evergreen, you're taking a risk. You know, especially if you're thought of or you consider yourself a risk-taking comedian or an edgy comedian, that risk is something. You're risking something. You can't complain when there are consequences. You're risking consequences. That's part of your job. That's part of what I do. Um, so if you want to take that risk, you have to accept consequences. And uh, I accept these consequences. I've, I've talked a lot about it, you know. If you don't want consequences, then don't call yourself edgy. Though, I mean, like any comic that calls themselves edgy is, you know, it's a little corny. That's for other people to say, doll. <laughs> but um, the reason you can look at art, the same piece of art, you know, different times throughout the world and see a very different thing each time is because what changes is the world around it, and it changes what you see. You know, an awake, an awakened world is going to see more problems, but it's worth it because then you can fix those problems. So back to this uh, blackface episode of the Sarah Silverman program. We, um, we wanted to use comedy to explore and expose racism, which, you know, now just is like, I feel like saying fuck you, like, to myself. But I, you know, I had not yet learned all that I know about race in America then. I knew there was racism in America, but I, I had no idea what I was about to understand. I, I had no idea, really, what was going on. You know? And social media was a huge part of my education. You know? just, like the, just like the Me Too movement taught well-intentioned cis men that daily life for non-cis men is fund fundamentally different, is fundamentally harder. And that up until then, cis men had only had to see life through their own cis male lens to survive. And I remember the moment um, just a few years ago when I realized that white people have only had to see the world through a white lens in order to survive. Whereas people of color have to see the world through their lens and a white lens in order to get survive in this country. Just like women see the world through their lens and need to see their, the world through a male lens in order to survive in this country. But I was watching yet another black person get shot by a cop. It was Philando uh, Castile, 2016. And I remember thinking, oh my God, there's an epidemic of cops killing black people. The, the, the very, you know, of black people being killed by the people who have sworn an oath to serve and protect them. God. And then a, a couple beats after that, I went, Oh my God, that's not an epidemic. It's how it's always been. I'm just seeing it now because of social media. That was a doozy. That changed me, you know, like on a cellular level. Then I started looking back and the realizations kept coming. Like that episode where I wore blackface had to go through several filters to be on national television. It wasn't, I didn't wear blackface at a party, you know, somewhere in time. It was on television, had to go through many filters. And not only was it written and produced by whites, but the filters were white. And this is only, you know, 13 years ago. And the realization that, you know, we always thought like, in this episode, in this episode, I thought I was playing an ignorant woman in a liberal bubble who thought 
she was illum illuminating racism by wearing blackface. What I didn't realize then <laughs> is that in reality, I was an ignorant woman in a liberal bubble who thought she was illuminating racism by using blackface. So now what? I wished I could delete it from existence, but I can't. Can I? Can I? Wait, can I? <laughs> no, I can't. I can only be fundamentally changed by it and make it right the best I can in every way that I can for the rest of my life. Period. It's not a curse. It's a gift, you know? It's not hard. But you can't unring that bell. And again, there are consequences, and I got to take them. I got a cast in an all-black movie, two days of work on it, and it's great. It's actually going to come out soon. And uh, I learned all my lines, and I was really excited. Written, directed, produced, um, all-black people. And I was really honored to get to be a part of it and excited. And the night before I was going to shoot at 11 o'clock at night, my agents called me and said uh, that I was fired because they, one of the producers found picture uh, like stills of me um, from that episode in blackface. And that's a consequence. That's a consequence, period. I was bummed. I certainly couldn't see myself as a victim. And I really think I would have done a great job at it, but they were probably smart. I understand. It's a small movie that did not want some stupid backlash like this deterring it from succeeding. How can I blame them? <laughs>